Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Yep, doing the third class of the day. Here getting ready for the fall festivals. And in this one, we're going to be talking about the remission of sins. We're going to be doing it the way we started off way back in 2015, looking at eight verses from the KJV. The first one is going to be Matthew chapter 26 and 28 which says, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And that's what we plan on doing in this class is getting a full understanding of this so-called remission of sins, because that's what this is all about. I mean, that's why we serve our father in heaven, you know, because if it was not for this remission of sins, we would all perish. We would all die. And of course, we want to live. So this gives us motivation to do what thus saith the Lord. And we see this down here in, in verse 29, perhaps, where it says, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink of it new with you in my father's kingdom. Now, this is a little bit beyond the scope of this class, but um, I believe our father wanted us to talk a little bit about this because this is timely information. If you know what I mean, we are ready for this marriage supper which very well could take place within, you know, the next season. So what we just really need to understand is that we're going to get cleaned up first. And then there will be this marriage supper, just like any wedding. You wouldn't dare get married without expecting to get clean. Well, spiritually clean means this remission of sins. And what we say here is see here is that it's uh by his blood talking about our messiah um our savior uh the word made flesh shed his blood for this remission of sins the next verse we'll look at is mark chapter 1 verse 4 where john did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins so here we are already getting somewhere because we see right here what it takes to get this so-called remission of sins it's through baptism according to john but wait didn't the messiah say it was his blood in the previous verse back there in 26 and 28 well, let's look down here in one is Luke 1 and 77, which says, I give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of sins. So this is important because that's what we're doing here by way of this class, hopefully, is giving knowledge of salvation. Because this is what it takes for our salvation is in if we want to live. Now, not everybody plans to live through the apocalypse. And that's understandable, you know, people have choices and I'll praise our Father in Heaven for giving us these choices. Um, but for those who choose life, then this remission of sins is necessary. And so that's what we're talking about. We did a class not too long ago asking, how did the Messiah die for our sins? Well, let's look at some more of these verses. Let's look at verse 3 and 3 out of Luke says... And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins back to John the Baptist. Now, of course, these are um, the Gospels and they repeat themselves. But let's look in 24 and 47, because there's only really eight of them. Um, it says, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Um, let's go back to 46. It says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Again, this is what we're doing here. You know, we're being obedient. You know, that this is what it is. And, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially the Levi's, they look at getting into the ministry. Well, this is a ministry that can, that can start in our own selves. You know, all the other testimonies I heard, it's like the second baptism does a lot for us. But anyway, let's let's go on and let's look at 
um, verse 2 and verse 38. Now, yeah, I'm going to go find me a better translation to read here. Um, and I give you guys my testimony on this. The, the first song that the Father put on my heart, I'm going to say, the song was called J-S-U-S. And I used to sing it in the streets of D.C. But that was before I learned the significance of the letter J. So I'm going to choose the name very carefully, even though I don't see it here. I'm going to find the closest one. There it is. Um, Yashua. Yashua. But, you know, I wanted this to be a beginner class. So let's go over here and do something right quick. Like just looking in Matthew chapter one, how in verse one, you see how the Messiah's name is pronounced. And then in verse 21 you see it's pronounced differently and you notice the difference is one they're just talking about the Christ and in the other one they're spelling out his name specifically so when we come over to the interlinear Bible and look at the language behind these when we look at verse 1 we see how his name is spelled in Greek then notice how it's spelled differently in verse 21 and the difference you'll notice is that in at the end the end sound at the end is what's missing from the other one and in some of these verses they replace that end sound with an s and that's how they're getting j s u s but notice that when his name when they're saying what to call him what to name him like in verse 21 and in verse 25 the name has an end sound on the end more like jason but we understand the J did not exist until the Bible was written. So it would be more like Yason. Well, we add that to what we already know. Yahshua. So we're just missing the N at the end. So it's more like Yashuan. And so that's why you'll hear me pronounce this name Yashuana. It's just got the N. I don't know how to explain it, but there's an N sound at the end when you pronounce his name. So let's read it. Matter of fact, we'll read it out of, in, out of the Names of God Bible, which says, Peter answered them, All of you must turn to God and change the way you think and act. And each of you must be baptized in the name of Yeshua Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven. Then you will receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. So here we're learning a lot about baptism. You know, not only the sin that we will be forgiven of these sins, which is the same as remission or cancellation of these sins. Baptism is what gets our sins canceled out. And we can do it any time of the year, unlike Passover, which is once a year. Um, that's why, you know, many have been baptized more than once. Um, and then, but we also see here, that is saying, then you will receive the Holy Spirit as a gift. Now, let me go to one verse. I had planned on talking about it all in here already, but we'll go ahead and jump to it now. We're going to find it in asudapagrapha.com. We was looking over there at Bible Gateway. But in this book, we're going to come down and look in the Epistle of Barnabas, chapter 6 which is about the sufferings of Christ and the new covenant. We learn about the third temple and what we learn is how that temple would be constructed. Let me, let me just read it. It says, therefore having renewed us by the remission of our sins, he has made us after another pattern that we should possess the soul of children in so much as he has created us anew by his spirit. So in other words, this renewing or this remission of our uh, sins takes us back to the way we were in the kingdom of heaven. Then let's come down here to chapter 16 where it's talking about the spiritual temple instead of using the word remission of sins it's using forgiveness of sins and saying having received the forgiveness of sins and placed our trust in the name of the Lord we have become new creatures 
formed again from the beginning wherefore in our habitation God truly dwells in us so in other words what it's telling us is once we get this forgiveness of sins we become these new creatures like it said above but now it's saying that we get to become the habitation of God in other words he gets to dwell in us uh, like I said before get that Holy Spirit but what we're learning here is that we get this through baptism and you know there are those who are baptizing themselves these days you know I've heard tell of it I've even done it myself and I haven't heard any body say anything negative about it yet so um but more times than not many people are baptizing each other for instance um i baptized my wife and then she turned around and baptized me and then we turned around and baptized the children all so that we can get into this temple here to get this forgiveness of sins and you know then we can become uh, this clean vessel. This is how it works. And this is the answer to the question. How did the Messiah die for our sins? He is the one who made this possible Of course John the Baptist paved the way but you know even that what we're reading here in Acts is When they actually had to be baptized again if we read the whole chapter in Acts They were saying that they hadn't received the Holy Spirit and they was wanting to know what they had to do and it's like you got to get baptized again this time in the name of the Messiah which John the Baptist hadn't done obviously um, but let's look in chapter 10 verse 43 says to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins now here it's saying that those who believe will get this remission of sins um let's read the previous verse it says and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which has ordained god to be the judge of the quick and the dead to give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins while peter yet spake these words the holy ghost fell on all them which heard the word and this could get a little bit tricky here this is luke talking but this could get a little bit tricky here because if you truly believe in his name one would argue that you would be baptized you know i would like to listen in on that debate but let's go on to the last time we're going to hear about remission of sins is in uh 3 and 25 of course we could look at forgiveness of sins we see there are actually five times that it is mentioned all the way up into Ephesians and Colossians but it's pretty much saying the same thing so let's look here at Romans 3 24 through 26 which says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the redemption of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in our Messiah, Yahshua. So, there you have it. What the Bible has to say about remission of sins is necessary to get baptized. And what we're learning here, many of us are learning here, is that it is necessary to get baptized again. And so that's the answer to the question. How did the Messiah die for our sins? It is through baptism, giving us the opportunity to get rid of these sins through baptism. So if you have any questions or anything, I'll see you in the comment section. And Shalom.